It's the total solar eclipse, the biggest celestial event of the century in North Texas. It's such a, a magical experience. And we're in the path of totality, plunged into darkness in the middle of the day. Oh, I wouldn't miss it for anything. What will happen for four minutes and will clouds block the view? I hope Delcus is on point for this one. We have crews spread out to show you this truly rare moment in history. Live from the Perot Museum, it's the total solar eclipse experience on WFAA. And we begin our live coverage with a live look over the Perot Museum in downtown Dallas. Total Solar Eclipse Day is finally here in North Texas. Thank you for joining us for the Total Solar Eclipse Experience on WFAA. I'm Cynthia Isaguirre. And I'm Mariel Ruiz. We're coming to you live from the Perot. A uh, sold out eclipse event here at the Perot uh, Museum of Nature and Science. And Cynthia, I can uh, tell you I have been looking forward to this day for so long. This is a once in a lifetime event. Absolutely. Here over North Texas, we haven't seen a total solar eclipse for nearly 150 years. Won't see one again for another 300 years. So we're going to make the most of this today, Maria. Absolutely. And it looks like a lot of people here are making the most of it. Let's talk about the weather real quickly mm -hmm. because that's top of mind for everyone. Will we get the total experience. You know, it's looking pretty good. Yes. Within the last uh, 20 minutes, we've seen more and more break in the cloud cover. Those temperatures climbed, it got a little bit breezier, and that is helping clear out some of the low level cloud. I think we'll still be dealing with some clouds higher up, but even then, that's going to still allow us to experience totality, which will happen at around 140. 140 and then the partial eclipse begins at 1223. 1223. But before then, there's so much partying to be done. Let's get to Sean Giggy here on the grounds of the Perot Museum. You have been talking with people from all over the world, Sean. right now because I'm kind of squinting but that is good news for you because it means the sun is peeking through those clouds and we might actually see this thing here coming up shortly I'm I got Bob with me right now Bob you're 14 I would do you mind turning around real quick I want to show you the back of the shirt the last time a solar eclipse came through the United States was in 2017 and you were there you're from South Carolina I know you said your mom over here your mom's a big space fan and you kind of just tag along but what do you remember about that solar eclipse in 2017 you were you were seven years old was it what was it like to see that? Uh, I saw like like the sun came out and then it went dark for a little bit. Are you are you excited to be here at this one? Yeah. Was it was it uh, was it something when your mom decided to come? You you were looking for it. How did you feel about that? I don't remember that much, but I remember I saw it. We like had food and stuff. We watched it. Are you? I know the sun's peeking out right now. Are are you worried at all that these clouds are gonna are block our block our view? Or are you? been crossing your fingers and you're optimistic I think the clouds are good I think I'll see it you think you'll see it you might you might be one of the youngest people to have seen two total solar eclipses that's that's pretty remarkable and you know that this isn't gonna happen in North Texas again for like 300 years so this is history right here does that mean something yep all right, all right well thanks for being here Bob thanks for talking to me right. hope you enjoy the solar eclipse and you can go back to South Carolina and tell all your friends about it. I appreciate right. it. Guys, the sun keeps coming and it keeps going. Hopefully, we, at Totality 140, <laughs> hopefully it'll be out. It's looking much better than this morning. I can tell you that. You can't just see the sun on me. You can see the sun on you guys way over there. Fingers crossed, Sean. And we should tell you that Dallas is the largest metropolitan city in the world where totality will happen. The time in totality here in Dallas will be 3 minutes and 51 seconds. But the highest time in totality will be in Ennis. Yes, four minutes and 24 seconds of totality, which is where we find our own Paige McCoy-Smith. She's out there, I believe, in downtown Ennis, enjoying, taking in the sights. How's it looking out there? Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. And I gotta tell you, it's hot. I'm here with Israel Padillas. He is an influencer. He's got almost a million followers on Instagram. And I don't know about you, but that sun is beaten down, and that's a good thing, don't you think? Yeah, it is. I mean, not for me, kind of, because I'm already dark, but 
I'm gonna, I'm going to turn red after this. I know. I think we're all going to have a little bit of sunburn, but we don't mind because as long as these clouds continue to cooperate, we're going to have an opportunity to really experience this total darkness. And I don't know if you know this, but Ennis is the place where you're going to see the longest period of totality. Four minutes, 23 seconds, 24 seconds, give or take. Is that why you're here today? Yes, and it's crazy because here in Ennis, this is a small little town. No one knows where, no one knows, no one knows yeah. where Ennis is located at. Right. So I'm assuming this eclipse here is going to put Ennis on the spot. Right. And I'm just happy to be here, even with you. Thanks for having me on this amazing show. Isn't that cool? Is this your first time on TV? Yes, it is. And what a great time. And as you mentioned, Ennis is a small town, but it certainly makes a big difference here in our North Texas community. Not only is it known for this totality of the eclipse, but it's also going to be an opportunity to see blue bonnets because they're in the height of blue bonnet season. You can come and you can see both of these experiences. This is like truly truly a once in a lifetime opportunity and we're talking not gonna happen for another 300 years we ain't gonna be alive we, i know we're gonna be pushing up daisies baby that is exactly mm -hmm. true but this has been this has been so much fun thank you so much for being here and let's thank just you. continue to keep our fingers crossed how about them cowboys baby oh, let's go cowboys all right i'll send let's it back go. to you <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Today's all about experiencing this together and having fun. And we want to call to your attention uh, at the split screen here on WFAA because the eclipse is already uh, happening in Mexico. Right. So Mexico sees it first. They will experience uh, the path of totality and then eventually it crosses into Texas next. So what you're seeing on the bottom right hand of your screen right now is a live feed from NASA and the eclipse starting in Mexico. So let's talk about the weather real quickly. If we can take a shot of the sky right now because we're seeing a break in the clouds. Yeah, so this is right over the Peru, I believe. And we're seeing some blue sky overhead. That's fantastic news. If we can stay this way for the next couple of hours, Izzy, we will be golden. And on the ground, you don't see a lot of people behind me, but this is a sold out event. This is spread out uh, several parking lots. There are bound houses. There are people just really trying to get a feel for the day before witnessing uh, the partial eclipse. Yeah, there's stuff happening all over outside and also inside of the Perot Museum. We're talking about 5,000 people. Now outside here, we want to bring in Dr. Solange Ramirez from Sloan Digital Sky Surveys, one of our experts that's going to help guide us through what's about to happen. Yes, so welcome in. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm thrilled to be here. <laughs> okay, and something that you told us was this will be your first total eclipse. What are you hoping for well, today? Well, first of all, I really hope that the, we get clear weather so we can actually see the corona of the sun, which is a very faint part of the sun who can only be seen in a total eclipse. Okay, and, and why can it only be seen in a total eclipse? Because it is very, very faint and diffuse, and the light of the sun is too strong. So it opaques this, uh, this emission of the, of the corona. Uh, when the moon goes in front of the sun, it blocks that light, make it visible for us to see the corona. So will it look like just very, very thin light coming out of what it would appear to be the moon, basically? The something like that. Yeah. So the, the part that is blocked by, by the moon, it will be very uh, black, and then you will see a very diffuse emission around it, which is the corona. You can only also see other things, like you can see planets, and if it gets really dark, we will be able to see some stars, actually, uh, on the vicinity of, of the sun around it. So one of the questions that I keep hearing from people throughout is, when is it safe to take off your eye protection to actually view totality? That's right. Uh, during the, the partial phases of the eclipse, it's absolutely necessary to wear the glasses. Uh, when totality happens around 1.40 here in Dallas, it is okay to take your glasses out. And you want to take them out to actually see the corona. Uh, the totality, as you said, will last three minutes and 52 seconds. And after that, when you start seeing the sun light peeking out again, you need to put the glasses back on. So talk about what this moment means for you, Dr. Ramirez. I mean, we talk about how it hasn't happened here in North Texas in 150 years. Won't happen again for another 300 years. I mean, 
some people, this is it. That's right. For most of the population of Dallas, this is it. As you said, 150 years ago it happened, 300 years more is going to be the next one here in Dallas. So this is a once in the lifetime opportunity. And for me, it's going to be my first and I am completely thrilled about it. And I just want the win to continue so we can take these clouds out of the way. Yeah. And I've heard that a total solar eclipse versus a partial, you just can't even compare the two. You cannot even compare because on a partial eclipse, it's still daylight. You still see the sun and it looks like a little bit like a cloudy day, but in a total eclipse, it actually feels like night. The temperature is going to drop about 10 degrees, so it will be cooler in addition of being completely dark as the night. And you said it's going to look like night. You can see planets. What planets would we be able to see if the sky is clear? Well, if the weather cooperates, uh, if you look to the east, you will be able to see Jupiter. Jupiter is the brightest planet that we will be able to see today, if it is clear. And if you see it towards the east, it's going to be uh, other of the minor planets. But uh, if you have a doubt, just enjoy the corona because you can see you can see the planets in another occasion during the night but the corona is the thing to see and today. But what you mean by that is put the phone down oh that's right yeah, absolutely. put the phone out and just enjoy the moment it's only less than four minutes of your life just enjoy it it'll go by very fast it will go like very fast. Yeah, and I'm sure there will be lots of professional uh, photographers out there, right, that can, you know, take those pictures. So thank you so much for joining yes. us. Uh, yeah, stand by. We'll, yeah. we'll go back to you. We'll continue having conversation. But before that, let's continue to go out to our cruise throughout North Texas. Brittany Moncrief standing by at Fair Park for another viewing event in Dallas. Brittany, what are the crowds like? Oh wow, so it's been a steady flow of people coming here in Fair Park to experience the total solar eclipse. You can't even believe it because it's so amazing. And you know, I have with me, there's some students that are here from South Dallas. I have with me Megan and her teacher, Miss Roberts. They're both here from St. Anthony. So tell me, Megan, how are you feeling? What's it, what's it like? What's it like for you to be here to experience this eclipse? Actually, really good. I'm really good. Um, I'm really excited. You're really excited? Have you guys been learning a lot trying to get ready for today or what have you learned? I learned that it's really hot out here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, I think that's it. I think that's it. And I saw they were passing out some, some fans just a little while ago because the sun, just a little bit of uh, what everybody was chanting, sun, come out and stay, clouds go away. And sure enough, that's what's happening. Ms. Ms. Roberts, what are you looking forward to today? I'm looking forward to see how the eclipse actually works. This will be my first time actually seeing it, so I'm actually excited. Cool, me too. I think a lot of us are really excited, especially since, you know, this hasn't happened in about 300 years. That's amazing. And we actually, like I mentioned, we have the students behind us. We have some residents just in the area, some community members that are up in the stands. and. We also have a group of scientists. There's a lot of scientists here, individual scientists doing different projects and experiments that they're working on. And we actually spoke to one of those groups where they have citizen scientists where they're not trained or professional scientists, but they do get some training from some of the experts. And they've been tracking the, the eclipse uh, they've been staying along the, the totality path of the eclipse. They have 35 different teams stationed throughout uh, the totality path, and they're looking at the light rays as the sun reaches uh, totality, as the moon goes right directly in front of it. So it's a lot of excitement here, people from all over here, and I know you guys are excited. You guys, pretty much the, almost the whole school looks like it's out right. here. Right, uh, third through eighth grade. Third through eighth grade. And what some of the students have the students been saying to you? Um, they just want to see the moon over the sun. They're like, what? This is cool. So hopefully we get to see it without the uh, clouds blocking the sun. Um, and we have a, a good time. So. Absolutely. And one thing that I do want to point out that one of the scientists said to me that I thought was really key is remember that the sun is a star. Right. So with a lot of the research that's being taken place today as this special day, that means that they're able not to only track the sun, but also look at how stars move and operate. Right. Pretty cool. Yeah. All right. We're going to send it back over to you guys. We're having so much fun nerding out here on this total solar eclipse day. Again, time in totality for Dallas, 3 minutes 51 seconds. In McKinney, totality there will be 3 minutes and 4 seconds. 
Uh, yes, everyone is dancing over these numbers. And in Fort Worth, they'll experience totality for two minutes and 24 seconds, my dear. Yeah, and you can see here, we're showing you a map of the total solar eclipse time and totality, not just the path. So the white line that you see there in the middle, that's called a center line. And that's the area where it will be in totality for the longest amount of time, close to four and a half minutes. Now in North Texas, we are going to see it range anywhere from a few seconds to four minutes and 24 seconds in Ennis. So we'll be watching that. Uh, and like you said, in Fort Worth, four minutes, 20, no, oh, Two, Two minutes. minutes, 24 seconds in Fort Worth. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's where we find our Matt Houston. He's at the Fort Worth Botanic Garden. I know they've been doing some cool experiments there too with sounds. So, uh, but what are the crowds there like today, Matt? It's a great crowd. It's a 150 year wait for two minutes and 24 seconds, but I think most of the people here would tell you it's worth it. And obviously the sun peeking out a little bit. So there's starting to be some enthusiasm here that maybe wasn't here a couple of hours ago. I'm here with Patrick Newman, uh, the CEO of the Fort Worth Botanic Gardens. And Patrick, tell me first what's happening in the Vista today. So, well, you said it, the sun is out, right? The people are coming here. This is a great opportunity for the community to gather, to see this once in a lifetime opportunity. You know, we're hopeful this people will sort of create core memories, emotional souvenirs that we'll be talking about for years and years to come. One of the coolest things I've noticed about the crowd is just how diverse it is. You have people of all ages. Why is that important? And I know that was one of your goals, was, was to bring out a different kind of crowd. Yeah, we wanted the crowd to represent the DFW area, right? We wanted to represent every corner that makes this such a great community to uh, be a part of. And so we really reached out broadly to invite the community to be here and to participate in this once in a lifetime event. We've brought food trucks in, we've got partners from a number of different institutions to really kind of draw in, as you said, a diverse and representative crowd. This is a research institute, so what can we learn today? We're, so the science side of us is really geeking out, right? So on, a, on the plant side, we're really curious to see what plants do during this period of totality. And uh, you know, are they going to close? Are they going to open? Uh, so we've got scientists that are doing that. We're also really interested about sound, right? And how does sound have an impact on the landscape, but also on the animals that we have that we know are part of the Botanic Garden. So we've got partnerships with NASA. We've got our Brit scientists out. It's just going to be an observation and sort of data gathering moment for all of us. The partnership with NASA, I think, is particularly interesting. Um, explain to me a little bit about what they're doing with sort of the special microphones that they have out there. Yeah, we've got a couple of special microphones that are away from the crowds, right? Um, but we'll, we'll be gathering data to see what happens to sort of the sound of a landscape when it goes dark. Um, and we have our guesses to what will happen, but um, we're one of a number of locations across the, the sort of path of totality. So we'll gather all that data and hopefully find some common points that suggest that, that really cool things happen. This is obviously a once in a lifetime event. It's a one time thing. How do you use an event like this to recruit these visitors to come back to the Botanic Gardens? Well, so this is one of the many things we have going on. So there's butterflies in the garden. There's a dinosaur exhibit. We've got goats on display that are part of an invasive species uh, eradication effort we have underway. We've got beautiful sculptures. It's just one of the many things that we do. It's what makes Botanic Gardens so great is that it's not just a you know, one-time event. We're blessed and fortunate with this solar eclipse today, but there's so much that we have to offer across the year. And encourage people to look us up at fwbg.org to see what we have in terms of classes, programs, events. Uh, this is a place to be. It's a great place for the community to gather. My last question, Patrick, is what does this mean to you personally to be able to look up and, and see the moon block the sun tonight? I'm super excited about it. Uh, the last time we had a you know, total solar eclipse in the U.S., uh, I was living in Austin, and I thought, um, you know, I gotta, the next time it happens, I've got to see it. And here I am living in Fort Worth. Um, it's sort of incredibly fortuitous, but I am stoked. I am so excited about this. This is something I'm going to be talking about for years and years to come. I think you and me both, as well as some of the 3,000 or so people who are here, lots to be excited about. We will keep you posted as all of this unfolds later today. Izzy, Marielle, I'll send it back to you. All right, thank you, Matt Houston, live at the Fort Worth Botanic Garden. And I should note that the partial begins at 1223, so we're just four minutes away. That is so exciting. So uh, we're welcoming back Dr. Solange Ramirez from Sloan Digital Sky Surveys. Okay, we're less than five minutes away from the partial eclipse oh, yeah. starting. Walk us through what you expect in that moment during a partial. So. During, during the partial, what we're going to see is the progression of the eclipse from a very tiny coverage started at 12.23 to, to, to totality at 1.40. So basically, as the time progresses, we are going to see less and less 
of the sun being visually. This is a time where you can observe during with your glasses. You must use your glasses during, during this time. Okay, and, and walk us through what solar glasses are. They're not regular sunglasses. They are not regular sunglasses. That They are uh, particularly tinted, in fact, heavily tinted. When you put them on, you see nothing. But it is enough for the sunlight to go in in a safe way and protect your eye. So there are glasses and glasses. Sometimes uh, they are out of paper but they must have the ISO standard sign on them. And with that, you can identify which are actually good to, good to use. Dr. Ramirez, let's talk about the map of totality. It, goes, it travels all the way up the East Coast and up through Maine. Can you take us through it, through the states? That's right. So um, as you said, we were seeing in the feed uh, that uh, it already started in Mexico and it's going to move northward to the east. Uh, cross through Texas and then go to all the other states that there are in between t until uh, Maine, I believe, is the last one. It's going to go as well into the area of uh, Canada. And that is the reason why it's called the Great North American Eclipse because it's going to cover the three countries in North America. And walk us, speaking about the timeline again, mm -hmm. walk us through. Uh, what happens after 140? So after 140, the, um, the the moon is going to totally cover the sun, and you will be able to see at the corona of of the sun. It's going to be dark, like in the night. You're going to see uh, other planets and stars. It's going to feel a little bit cool, about 10 degrees low, and that is going to last for three minutes and 51 seconds here in Dallas. And what are some of the things that we can expect during totality? We've been hearing about, about the animals, plants closing up. What That's can right. we expect? That's right, because nature is such that when night comes, uh, we expect certain behaviors on the animals. And if you are in an area where there are birds, the birds are going to quiet down and because they are going to go into their nest, and spend the night and the same thing about the flowers that close during the night they will close down as well and even some plants will stop photosynthesizing so that's the process you know that the plants use the sunlight to make food that that process stops as well which is a little harder to see of course it is a harder to <laughs> see but yes of course that that uh, uh, phenomenon actually ends during a total eclipse of the sun all right, it okay. is 12.23 and partial is beginning, doctor. Oh my goodness. How, do you, how are you feeling? <laughs> I'm so excited. We've been waiting for this for so long and I am thrilled to be here. Tell us what 10-year-old Dr. Solandra Ramirez would be thinking right now. Actually, I, I, I don't think that I would have been thinking. It's just uh, an amazing experience. Uh, I have had a full career in astronomy and engineering, and right now it's just a moment to be inspired. And it's inspiring to see so many people here at the Perot Museum uh, ready to enjoy this unique event, and I am one of them. What is your hope for all of the younger kids who are here today? I really want them to take this moment and enjoy these astronomical phenomena. And if they are interested in going into sciences, actually take a good think about it and, and go for it. It's in incredible. I mean, you yourself were inspired from a very young age to pursue this science. Uh, and you're going to see a new generation get inspired today. That's right, and it has been quite incredible for me all this week. We've been doing many outreach events in schools and community centers with children that are interested in going into science. And for me, I know that I inspire them, but they inspire me as well. Can, let's look at the screen together because the partial shot is up right now. Oh, there you go. Yeah. If you could describe and explain what's happening, Dr. Ramirez. So as we see right now, it's only a little bit of the, of the sun that is being covered. As we progress in the, in the next hour or so, the moon is cover, covering more and more and more of the sun until 1.40 when we reach totality.
And uh, during this time, the shadows will look pretty cool as well. Can you talk us through that? Uh, that's right. If you are close uh, to trees, for example, that just filter uh, the sun and see the shadows, you're going to start seeing uh, kind of moon-like uh, <laughs> effects uh -huh. on the sun. Another way to see in it is with a colander of pasta that has many holes. And if you pro project the shadow of the sun on the ground, you're going to see one little eclipse for every hole in the colander. And that is actually something that uh, you can do at home with your children when they are playing around. And it's actually quite amazing to see. Wow. So the, the shadows will take on like a crescent shape. A crescent shape. Yeah, between now and totality. That is, uh, that is correct. And uh, uh, they can see it as well progressing and progressing because the crescent will become narrower and narrower at the time uh, passes until 140. Until totality That's at right. 140. And again, totality will vary across all of North Texas, uh, but as high as four minutes and 24 seconds in Ennis. Uh, all right, Izzy, what, what are you thinking right now? You know, what I'm thinking is really what I asked Dr. Ramirez, just how this is going to inspire our future astronomers. And I'm wondering, you know, how many little kids here, as we're looking at them here at the Perot Museum with their uh, protective eyewear looking up into the sky, who are saying, this is so cool. I want to see another one of these. And then that other one will lead to another one, another one, and an astronomer who will take us into the future, science-wise. Well, and in fact, we need so many children to go into sciences because we need talent to answer all the questions in astronomy that are coming up for, for the research that we do. So we actually need children interested in science to become scientists and help us uncover the mysteries of the universe. And I have no doubt that today will inspire so many of them to go into the sciences. And you know, I know Sean Giggy has been roaming around the Perot uh, Museum grounds. Uh, we have so many people that have already arrived and they're just spread out all across uh, the Perot. So uh, I believe we're going to Sean. Yeah, Sean, tell us who you've been talking to because there are people from all over the world here at the Perot. Yeah, we have been talking to people. I've talked to, to folks from uh, Washington, D.C., San Francisco, Wichita, Kansas, all over the place. You know, I, I almost didn't answer, didn't respond to you guys because I was looking up uh, th since the eclipse has started and I was a little bit speechless. And this is just the beginning. We haven't even seen hardly anything yet. We're not even close to totality yet. But there are some breaks in the clouds here. And I know we had a shot up a little bit ago, uh, our photographer Cody Markham. Kudos to Cody because he was kneeling down in the heat with hunched over trying to hold that shot. It is not easy with a huge camera like this. But I had my glasses on. I was looking up. The clouds have moved in the way right now. But you can see just a tiny start of like a thumbnail on the right-hand side of that, that sun. You can see the moon just starting to move in place. It's behind the clouds right now, so we can't see anything. But just that little bit we saw already, just that little bit you saw already, um, I, I, know, I know you're seeing the NASA feed right now of the sun. Um, and if you, if you just look at it, it's already captivating. I can't imagine what it's going to be like in totality. But all around us right now, people are starting to stop in place, which was expected. Uh, we're still, you know, about an hour and 15 minutes or so, hour and 10 minutes away from totality, and people are just stopping and standing in place already uh, to watch this here at the Perot Museum. So it's already captivating people. It's captivating me. I just wish these clouds would move again. It was looking wonderful a second ago. But, yeah, we, we have some kids. I, I had a two-and-a-half-year-old I was going to talk to, but she's enjoying the inflatables in the bounce houses. I was going to see if she even cared about the eclipse because, you know, kids and inflatables might be a little more interesting than an eclipse, but uh, I'll have to track her down and get back to you guys and see what she thinks, see what, the, see what our littlest ones, our littlest Texans think about this eclipse. I think the, the clouds have a break right now. I'm going to take a look at this again. Hopefully we got a shot for you so you can see the beginning of this eclipse. The partial has begun. Totality coming up in just a little over an hour. Looking forward to it. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right, Sean Totally at 140 with maximum at around 142 this afternoon. And what a cool shot of the partial eclipse already. I can't imagine what's to come. I know it, and it's only going to get better and better, uh, Izzy. And, you know, 
Sean Giggy is a huge space nerd, so I know he's enjoying this just as much as some of those kids out there uh, just here at the Perot. Giggy geeking out. We want to go to Brittany Moncrief. She's at Fair Park where we have another uh, total solar eclipse viewing with thousands of people. And Brittany, y'all are having a great time out there. Absolutely. The band just got started playing and we, we see actually a lot of the crowds that are up there jumping. But take a look at this partial eclipse that's starting. Look at it. Look at it. It's amazing. It's kind of, it's a little hard to see again because of the clouds, but the clouds are kind of going brushing right over. I don't know if you guys might notice like during Halloween time when you get that that look where you can probably see like a, a witch going across past the, the moon or something like that. It kind of looks like that little shady. Oh, we lost a little bit of it. That's because of those clouds there. But we're hoping that those clouds move. It looks like they're steady moving. So we'll probably get another glimpse of it. But it's so amazing to see. Again, with our safe glasses on, it's amazing to see, you know, the sun up there. And you can just see like the edge, the little edge of the moon down at the lower right that's starting to make its way across the sun. And it's so cool, everybody. It's so cool cool to see this because hey it'll be hundreds of years before we're able to see it again here in Dallas so this is truly a big experience and everyone here is excited we've been seeing the kids put on their their glasses a little bit take them off and anytime the sun peeks through that's when they put the glasses on you hear the cheer oh look at it again oh that is a good picture right there look at that look at the sun and you can see down again again in that right bottom corner you can see where the moon is starting to make its way crossing in the path of the sun it has begun everybody it has started and it is amazing to see again uh, this mother nature mother nature is telling us what we want to see the show must go and go on she's giving us little glimpse here and there but you know what that's just another way for us to just appreciate <laughs> what is happening today on a day like this because this is just an amazing experience you know just to be able to experience this and experience it together and as i mentioned we have scientists from all over that are here in fair park they're also tracking the totality path and they're here from uh i spoke to a guy from uh um Colorado just a little while ago and we were talking about just the path and the work that they were doing the experiments that they were uh, that they were doing and they're tracking what you want to see there are the light rays that shine through past the sun that's what they're looking at and it, again we'll be here we're going to keep trying to get a little little peek at it as we keep going throughout the day and as we reach totality but we're going to send it right back over to you all at the Peru. Oh my gosh, what a moment, Brittany. Thank you. Yeah, the next total solar eclipse over Dallas will not happen again till 2317. We're talking another 300 years. So yeah. how cool that it's happening now and that, like Brittany said, we get to experience it together. All of us together here in North Texas, sprinkled across North Texas. I love how excited Brittany was. I know. I think we just <laughs> gained a new astronomer today. She's, so, I mean, she's having a blast. <laughs> We're all having a blast. And we talked about the maximum time of totality. Mm -hmm. will be in Ennis. We heard from Paige McCoy-Smith earlier, who's in downtown Ennis, but we have another crew in Ennis as well. Yeah, our uh, Matt Howerton uh, is in Ennis, and I believe he's at an observatory, so yes. that's a different perspective. Uh, Matt, how is it looking out there? Well, hey there, Mario. We are in Ennis at Dr. Bill Kenzie's house. Uh, he is a retired physician here in Ennis. He has a private observatory in his backyard. And what better place to literally take in the eclipse today? You have this, all this land back here, this pasture. You got the blue bonnets right over here. Some of the best things in Ennis, just open space. And it'll be dark, obviously, when there's going to be totality. And the sun's out right now, which is really nice. Dr. Kenzie's here with us. We're going to go inside to your observatory real quick. How about that? Uh, that's fine. Okay. Come right on in. It's built in the 60s. Real fun spot. Dr. Kinsey's been monitoring and tracking the sun. What, since 10 a.m. this morning? Uh, yeah, about that. <laughs> so everybody else has got these fancy laptops yeah. where they're kind of dialing in, tracking yeah. the sun as we speak. This is somewhat of an old-fashioned telescope. Yeah. You've had it since the 60s. That's right. So this flywheel right here, tell us how it works. Well... This clock drive drives this torque rod, which through this transmission wor uh, drives this worm gear, which drives the telescope. So it's kind of a natural moving telescope. It's pretty cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us, you're 88 years old. You're, you're excited about this one. You've never seen a total eclipse. Never seen a total eclipse. Seen 
three or four, you know, up to 75%, but anyhow. Yeah. Uh, We've said that you've had the best seat in town. Absolutely. <laughs> you bet. You bet. Let's look in here. What are you seeing right now? Well, it's just, uh, this started about at 1223. And it's about maybe 5 to 10% now. And gotcha. And we have full... Like, we can see the sun at this moment. If you put yeah. your eclipse glasses on, yeah. you can see a partial eclipse yeah. right now. And, I mean, we're praying that this weather holds up. Yes, we are. Looks like it's going to be good, though. I hope yeah. so. Yeah. All right, we're going to throw it back to you guys. We're in Ennis, probably one of the best seats in the house inside an observatory here with a filter on the telescope and wide open spaces. Back to y'all. Absolutely. All right, Matt, thank you. And our coverage continues here on WFAA+. Plus. A reminder that we will go live on WFAA at 1.30 this afternoon. We are awaiting Dr. Silver, the CEO of the Perot Museum, to talk with us about how they were able to make today's event happen. And today's event is just, it's, it's amazing. It's over 5,000 people here to witness totality in one of the best places to witness totality uh, because we have three minutes and 51 seconds of darkness right around 140 so we are approaching that time but right now we are really experiencing the partial eclipse uh, so uh, that that'll be really exciting we'll start to see the shadows change here in not too long and in Ennis we will have four minutes 24 seconds one of the longest times in totality here in North Texas. Paige McCoy-Smith is standing by in Ennis. You've been talking with all the people who have traveled to Ennis to witness this really awe-inspiring event. Paige, tell us about it. It is so much fun. People have come from all over the world. And in this case, this family of four drove here from San Diego, California to check out Ennis, Texas so that they could be prepared for the eclipse. Introduce yourselves to our friends. My name is Mazen. Andrea. And what's your name, sweetheart? Alessandra. Alessandra. And I'm Michael. Michael. Okay, let's put on your cool glasses, why don't you? Now, Alessandra and Michael, is this like the coolest thing ever being here? Yeah. Yeah. Have you been able to look up? Have you been able to see the eclipse? Yeah. And, yeah. You know, this is probably the only time you're going to be able to see it, at least in this particular path of the eclipse. What do you love? You've got a NASA t-shirt on. Are you into space? Is that something that really you have a passion for, or are you just kind of happy to be here? Uh, ever since second grade, I, I've been studying space for a while. I even have my own rocket company. I'm sorry? <laughs> you have your own rocket company? Well, I mean, it doesn't really make profit, except for a dollar I got from my parents, but... Okay. But you know what? You save that dollar because that's gonna that's a profit right there. You already made a little money. Maybe you can frame it. You've got to be so excited. This is a big part of the reason why you decided to come down here was to really make sure that his passion was going to be captured in this exciting moment. Absolutely. Actually, last year we put him in space camp in Huntsville, Alabama. Oh, man. So, so you were... Really, what'd you say? I got Barbie in Tennessee. She got Space Barbie. There's so much fun that's happening here. I got to tell you, there's people from everywhere. I've been having a blast. We're all are collectively just in awe. As we're seeing right now, it's beautifully clear, and it looks great here in downtown Ennis. All right, say goodbye, good morning, and good afternoon, and I'll see you in just a little bit. We'll be checking back in. Thank you so much, Paige. You look like you're having so much fun out there. I hope you are enjoying geeking out with all of the people there in Ennis, not only witnessing the beautiful blooms this time of the year, but of course, one of the longest times in totality in North Texas. Are you ready, Maria? We're just about an hour away from totality. I don't know if I'm ready. I'm ready to experience it, but I don't know if I'm mentally prepared, you know? You, I don't think you can prepare. So I know, how. when did you become interested in the sky? Oh man, I was, I had to, I don't remember not loving the wow. sky, Izzy. That's how long it's been. Wow. I mean, I, I grew up here in, in Arlington. I grew up in North Texas, so you know how volatile our skies are, and that really interested me. But then loving math, loving science, just my whole life, and experiencing partial eclipses, but now totality today. And being here with you, <laughs> can't wait for it, man. Can't wait for it. Tashar Parker is uh, at our downtown studio monitoring traffic this afternoon. And Tashara, uh, I, 
it does it. It looks like people heeded the warnings and kind of stayed home. You know what? I tell you what, Izzy, they certainly did. And I'm happy to say that this morning, this afternoon, too. Look, I'm usually on in the morning time, so I'm so used to saying that. But as we bring you on in studio, let me show you what's working here in the traffic department. This is what our Rogers right at 35, not too far from where Izzy and uh, Mariel are located. And you can see traffic is moving just fine. All right. So I want to uh, cycle through some of our cameras just to show you some of the other areas that we are monitoring. This is 820 right at Sun Valley over in Tarrant County. Again, your drive is smooth and clear. Thank goodness y'all heeded those warnings uh, that we've been talking about at least the last month or so. This is 45 right at Crispro. So if you're headed down toward the Ellis County area, your drive looks good north and southbound on 45. What I did want to call to your attention is from the Dallas Police Department. They mentioned a few hours ago, be aware of those rolling closures and we've been talking about those for a little bit. And I do want to show those to you on our maps here because again, we have uh, had mentioned this, I should say, uh, several times during the morning show that we had early on. So in this little square here is where you're going to be uh, mindful of as you're trying to make your way through parts of downtown Dallas, 35, I-30, 75, moving along Woodall Rogers. All of those are going to be closed between 1 to 2 p.m. And those are those exits as you're trying to get off of the highway into parts of downtown Dallas. Y'all know they're trying to do their best to control that traffic flow. I do have some safety tips. We can go ahead and take that full if you guys were able to do that. Some safety tips for today for the eclipse. OK, you guys know there are going to be hundreds of thousands of people in and around North Texas. So just be mindful of that before and after the eclipse. Avoid stopping on the roadway or on the shoulder. Do not try to view the eclipse while driving. OK, that means take those glasses off. All right. So just be careful as far as the rest of the Metroplex is concerned. If you're up in Denton and Collin County coming on down into Dallas or Fort Worth, your drive looks good. Ladies, back out to you. To Sharp. To Shara Parker, thank you so much for those updates. I'm so glad that the roads are actually behaving here across North Texas. And yes, be very mindful of those closures. Uh, but sunshine. I'm we loving are. this sunshine, my dear. It looks like we're going to get really lucky. And we have um, an astronomer that we are standing by to talk to. But before that, I want to get uh, up to Janelle Fort because Janelle, I believe you have the best seat in the house up on the roof of the Perot Museum. Look, Izzy, I absolutely agree. We took an elevator up five stories. We took two flights of stairs, and then we had to climb a 30-foot ladder to get to this point. But what we get is this amazing view. You guys have been able to take a couple of shots from our camera, giving you a really good glimpse at the sun. And as long as Mother Nature continues to cooperate throughout this afternoon, um, we, we really are going to see quite a spectacle from where we are. This bird's eye view that we have also gives us a good look at the expressways. Uh, you just heard Tashara talking about traffic. We're not seeing anything too bad either, which is really good at this point. And then of course, since we are above you all, we've been able to watch you guys down below. We've been able to watch all the people coming into the Perot. Um, Again, you've heard so much about what to expect today from the partial eclipse that's going on right now where, you know, the sun is looking a little bit like Pac-Man to the point when it reaches totality uh, in less than an hour or so at this point. And then when we get to see the corona, which is, you know, this big deal, a lot of astronomers have been talking about this so far, but the fact that this is one part of the sun that we never get to see. Um, unless there is a total solar eclipse. So, so much fun to be had. One thing with the clouds here, um, with the total solar eclipse, we were supposed to be able to see a couple of other planets, um, specifically Venus, because of the cloud coverage, we might not get that part of this experience. But again, if mother nature cooperates, at least we'll be able to see totality. So we'll be up here throughout. I'm sure they'll take our camera again, but I'm gonna send it back down to you guys. Uh, down on the ground level of the Perot, and I'll be I'll be looking over the, the edge at you guys every now and then. Uh, Janelle, how about you do that right now? Can you walk over? I'm gonna. They, here they go. They just took the shot. If you walk over and wave over. at me, I'll wave back. <laughs> walk over, and I want to okay. I want to see you. Right there, you yeah, are. Yeah. Hi, hey, hey friends. <laughs> hey, hey, girl. <laughs> have fun. Great I hope deal. you have a total eclipse of the heart today.
<laughs> Good you one. That was coming. <laughs> Absolutely. I was waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it so much fun. What a sight up there. But uh, Brittany Moncrees, we've talked to her a couple of times uh, just in the last hour. She is at Fair Park and she is with a NOAA scientist that specializes in space weather. Are you kidding me? Seriously, time to geek out some more. <laughs> Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, listen, I didn't know anything about space weather until Bill Murtaugh came and explained to me what space weather is. Because, you know, typically we think about the weather down here in our atmosphere, but there's weather that's happening in space too. So, Bill, tell us a little bit more about space weather and why the eclipse is helpful in your research. Yeah, so Space Weather Prediction Center in Boulder, Colorado, we monitor the sun 24-7. So the weather is, there is weather in space. It's different than weather here down on the ground. I don't care about hurricanes, and tornadoes, that kind of stuff. I'm worried about what happens on the sun. That's why I'm here today. Big eruptions occur on the sun. We see these sunspots develop, and a meteorologist is looking for a low pressure center on the sun. Mm -hmm. Space weather people, we're looking for these sunspots, and they're several times the size of the Earth. Wow. And what they represent is complex magnetic structures in the sun that can erupt. And when they erupt, they send out this big blast of radiation that can affect us here and it affects power grids, satellites, GPS, airlines, communications, all the technologies we rely on for everything we do today. <laughs> so it's a little bit scary sounding. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> That's like I told Jerry, if we do our job right, we get the information to the right hands, they do the right things to keep all that technology working and then nobody knows about it. Now, this is special because for you all, you are constantly kind of recreating your own eclipse every day when you do this research. But today, I mean, Mother Nature, she's doing it for you. That's that's part, mostly why I'm here. So, <laughs> yeah, so we, we create an eclipse in, in our forecast center. That we actually create it in space with an instrument. It's called a coronagraph, where we block out the sun to see what's happening in the corona. Because when these big eruptions occur, we have to figure out, first of all, did it occur? We look on the corona. Okay. Then we got to determine, is it coming towards Earth? Right. And if right. it is coming towards Earth, how fast is it moving? Because it moves anywhere from one to six million miles an hour. Ooh. But the sun is 93 million miles away, so it takes a day or two or three days to get here. But then when it gets here, it's a big plasma cloud of magnetized gas. It's like a big magnet. Yeah. Earth is a magnet. And the two magnets come together, and we get some problems. It can induce currents that cause problems to the grid. It heats up the atmosphere. It causes problems to satellites. All sorts of things can happen. So we got to let everyone know that it's about to happen. But this coronagraph that we rely on, that's what's going to happen today. Nature's coronagraph. It's going to produce just four minutes <laughs> of, the, of, of, of nature, of, of, the coron of that coronagraph that we rely on. Now I'm going to be able to look at the sun just for four minutes and see it. In, in, its, in its glory, all its glory. So. Oh, that's going to be awesome. And, and uh, we can't wait. We honestly can't wait. We were looking, and, and every time the clouds get just a little bit through and we get a glimpse of the sun, and you can see uh, the moon that is going over it, to me, the best description I have is kind of looks like Pac-Man. It's slowly making its way across. And so uh, we're excited. So we're going we're gonna to keep geeking out, as Izzy said, and keep looking. At, oh, and we got the, the sun is making its way. So we're going we're gonna to take a break and watch that for you. We're going to toss it back over to you guys at the Perot. All right, Brittany, and speaking of looking up, uh, we need to mention that there are hundreds of people on the roof of, the, of Dallas Fort Worth International right now watching the partial solar eclipse, which we've got a great shot of if we can take it in Fort Worth. It's happening right now. By the way, their time in totality today will be two minutes and 24 seconds. Yeah, it's just really impressive to see how that time in totality uh, does change across uh, North Texas. And here is a look at that shot, uh, I believe. Believe? That's a that's a, the chopper. We've got clouds right now. We lost the Fort Worth shop, oh, but we'll I get see. it back in a minute. Yeah, we'll get it back. And, and you saw it there briefly. That's uh, It was showing you the partial eclipse. And keep in mind, that's what you're going to see. You'll see it uh, get smaller and smaller. You see the sun get smaller and smaller until totality at 140. Okay, I want to now bring in our next astronomer, Dr. Kyle Kramer. Welcome. Thank you for being here with us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so what, what are you looking forward to the most with totality? You said it's your first one. This is my first one. So in 2017, I was still in graduate school working on my PhD, and I didn't have the time to get down to see it. So I'm very excited to see this one. Um, I think the most excited uh, part is just seeing it go dark, and hopefully there's some animals around here we can see behave interesting ways. <laughs> Dr. Kramer, we have a live picture up right now of the partial eclipse happening right now in Fort Worth. Can you take us through what to expect from now until totality? Yeah, so basically over the next hour 50 minutes or so this the moon is slowly covering up more and more of the sun and then at 140 we'll have the complete cover-up of the sun it'll get a little bit dark 
Um, and we'll have four minutes of a really spectacular sight, assuming the clouds stay away. <laughs> and right now, it looks like a lot of the cloud cover is staying away. So hopefully for another you know, 50 minutes or so, uh, we'll see it behave that way. OK, you mentioned the animal behaviors. So what do you mean by that? Well, the animals are very sensitive to the day and night cycle. So when it gets dark, when it's not supposed to, they kind of think it's nighttime. Some nocturnal animals might come outside thinking it's time to come out for their, for their typical nighttime activities. Um, a lot of other animals might, uh, for example, go inside, think it's time to go to sleep. So sometimes the birds do interesting things. So we'll see what we get to see around here in the middle of the city. And I understand the plants will do interesting things as well. Yeah, plants do interesting things as well. So. Everybody notices the eclipse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I remember in 2017, I did not experience totality, but it was in August, so it was hot. The, the cicadas were out, mm. and, uh, you know, it started getting dark out, and all I could hear were the cicadas. They were so loud. Uh, so, you know, can that happen again? Absolutely. Are there <laughs> cicadas in Dallas this time of year? Uh, I don't yeah, know. I don't well, know. Okay. Uh, usually there a little bit things. later. <laughs> crickets, a lot of crickets, yeah. What is your best advice for how to take in totality for everyone watching right now? Certainly wear your glasses. That's very important. Um, during totality, you can take them off um, Those during those roughly four minutes or two minutes, depending on where in the area you are. Uh, that's very important. And it's actually not only important for safety, but your glasses actually allow you to enjoy the eclipse more because the sun is just too bright to even be able to see the moon covering it up. So wear your glasses and then enjoy the sights when it's, when it's covered up completely. Look at the corona, enjoy the corona, which we usually can't see, of course. Um, and yeah, just enjoy the, you know, the amazing thing. Real quickly, some people have expressed concern to me like, well, Cynthia, we may not be sure when we can put um, take the sunglasses off. I, you know, I, I'm afraid to take them off like 30 <laughs> seconds too soon and damage my eyes. How do you know it's safe to take them off? If you're looking and it hurts your eyes, take then put them back on. Okay, <laughs> that's that's a good good, good your, one. <laughs> your eyes are pretty. Yeah, it's it's not too hard. It's not rocket science. If it hurts, put the glasses on. <laughs> All right, love that. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you can stick around. I mean, we totality is in. 40, 49 minutes now. So we just had to do some quick math. Okay, so we're here at the Perot and there is a huge event here, sold out event, and the crowd is just spread out across several uh, areas here. But I believe Sean Giggy is out and about. He's been having fun with the crowd. Uh, so Sean, where are you? I am, I'm on a, a nice grassy patch. I found a great group of folks over here. If you all can hear me, who all who all is this their first time seeing a total solar eclipse? Oh, that that was kind of lame right there. Let's try that again. Who's excited for the total solar eclipse? Yeah. All right. That, who wants me to stop talking so they can actually look at the sun? Nobody. They love me. Okay, I love it too. Uh, Silas. I got Silas here. He's 10 years old. He came from Colorado. How are you feeling about this? Um, good. That's it? Good. You're speechless. Yeah. <laughs> what makes you excited about it? Uh, no, it's cool. You said you told me that you saw the annular solar eclipse last year in Utah. Do you think this one's going to be better? Probably, since it's like a total solar eclipse. And, and you were you were telling me you're hoping that NASA didn't get it wrong, that the scientists didn't get it wrong, that the whole sun will be covered, right? You're crossing your fingers that they're right. Not really. I'm like because oh, okay. I'm pretty. It's like 99. Point nine percent. You you were just joking. You were just joking. Yeah. All yeah. Right. All right. Well, it's behind the clouds right now. When it comes back out, keep those glasses handy. Right. Hey, we're gonna stay here and enjoy it with these folks. This is a good. Hey, you guys found a good spot. We can just sit here and relax. The heat's getting a little hot when that sun comes out, isn't it? But hey, we're about what an hour away from totality, and we're looking forward to it. So, 140 is when it hits. Make sure you keep those glasses handy safe for your eyes guys back over to you don't worry sean you will get a lot more enthusiasm i think as we are in totality especially coming out of totality i can only imagine what this crowd is going to do oh i know i know a lot of people are already just standing by they have their glasses it looks like sean found a good crowd because everyone looks just comfy out there and we want to go back to ennis because ennis um, is really going to have a treat today. Uh, they will experience the maximum time in totality. Paige McCoy-Smith is out there uh, this afternoon helping us just get through this amazing time, dancing with all the people who have 
traveled to Ennis to take this in together. Hey, Paige. Hey, you've got me right. I'm here with Norma. You know what? She didn't travel anywhere because she's from Ennis. And boy, is she proud to be right. from Ennis. So this has been something that y'all have been looking forward to. You can't contain yourself. You're jamming. You got your glasses ready. What has it been like to have your little town descended upon from people all around the world? Listen, let me tell you something, Paige. This is like world-renowned news here in Big E, Texas. So we're very proud to have the people come, and we're just glad we were on the scope and the map to be here to see this wonderful event. This is indeed a huge event, and it's so exciting. Why don't we step back over here, just in case some other people decide to kind of step in front. Watch your step, honey. But I do want to talk to you, because being here, Blue Bonnets, you're known for your Blue Bonnets. This is a big part of, your, of, of what Ennis is all about. But I'm afraid the eclipse may be eclipsing the Blue Bonnets this year. What do you think? But I think it's all going to come together as one, because that's how we do things here. We're unified in the Big E, so the uh, shadow will just make it shine a little bit brighter for our blue bonnets here in the Big E, girl. I'm telling you, this could not be better with having the blue bonnets and the eclipse. Have you taken a peek yet? Yes, I just did a few minutes ago, and I can already see it already. So I'm excited for the full eclipse. Do you think that the clouds and the weather are going to cooperate? Absolutely. I told the guys down the uh, road there that, hey, we ordered that special sunlight for today. You know, Ennis is really a pretty prominent place, you know. It's right now in the central of the United States as being the one that's proud, that has the most totality than pretty much any other town. And to have that experience and to bring, welcome people, it's a wonderful way to say hi, y'all, which is y'all's slogan to so many more people from around the world. Exactly. So we want to give a big hi, y'all, to everybody else as we get ready to have this total event happen here once again. E-Town Proud. E-Town Proud. That's the way it is. Norma, thank you so much. Look to the skies. We're going to have fun. All but right. be safe doing it. We're ready. I'll send it back. Oh my goodness, Paige, give Norma a big hug from us. All right, so again, totality begins at 1.40 p.m., maximum totality at 1.42 p.m., the totality ends at 1.44, and the partial ends at 3.02 this afternoon. Right, and that's going to vary depending on where you're at. Those times specifically for uh, DFW, and time and totality will be different across all of North Texas with 3 minutes and 51 seconds in Dallas, 2 minutes, 24 seconds in Fort Worth. And I do want to point uh, to your attention towards another part of your screen there. You can see the eclipse there happening. So this is our NASA feed, and it kind of goes back and forth between different areas, not just in Mexico, but in Texas, because everyone is witnessing totality at different times. And you saw there a human sun and a, and human, a human earth. And a human earth. <laughs> wow. We've, we've seen it all out here today. And again, it is 1257 now, and we have a real treat coming up here in just a couple of minutes. We're going to talk with Dr. Silver. She is the CEO of the Perot Museum. She's going to explain to us how they made today's event happen and what they plan for the future of the Perot Museum. And I've got to tell you, it is so impressive. I have been uh, listening to just all the planning here over the last m few months and just all of the astronomers that came into town from Carnegie, uh, not just for today, but leading up to today, going out and doing outreach programs and and just this event today, thousands of people here for the sold out event at the Perot. So explain to us what happens with the total solar eclipse. Okay, a total solar eclipse. Basically, it's the moon coming right between the sun and the earth at the right time during the day. And it causes the sun to be completely blocked out for a certain amount of time. And this one is so special because we, it's said to be that we are in a golden age for eclipses. We had one in 2017. It, totality, of course, was different. It was a different path. We had the annular uh, eclipse in October, which really also means the moon covers the sun, but uh, it was a little bit closer to uh, the sun, so it didn't fully block out. You can still see the, the ring around it this time around, though. It is completely covering. That means totality. Not many people around the world see totality in their lifetime. What will you be focused on during totality today? I am hoping that it's clear enough mm -hmm. so that I can see Jupiter. I want to be able to see Jupiter during the day. That would be so cool. Uh, I also want to see the corona. I think that yeah. would be so special. And that's the outermost 
atmosphere, outermost layer of the atmosphere of the sun. Uh, generally, day to day, you can't see it because the sun is way too bright. Mm -hmm. So uh, because the sun will be covered up, you should be able to see uh, the corona. All right. Well, I believe we are ready to go. If we can, let's talk with Dr. Silver, the CEO of the Perot Museum. Welcome, Dr. Silver. Well, thank you. We're so happy to have you here. Thanks for joining us. And I mean, tell us what it was like just planning this, what it's like to now be here today. It's a little surreal to be here today. We started planning for this in 2019. Wow. So it's been years, but immediately we, are, we recognized that Carnegie Science would be the right partner for us. And we've been working with them since that time. And as you mentioned, they brought in astronomers, but we actually flew in 29 astronomers from all around the world to be with us here today. Half of those astronomers are women and about half of them are bilingual as well. And so we've been able to do outreach over the course of this last week into schools, retirement homes, community centers, to ensure that everybody has access to this event, everybody has an opportunity to understand, and then we've distributed a million pairs of Perot Eclipse glasses just to ensure access. Five years of planning, what goes into that? It's a lot of, of work, right? We had to have the astronomers come out. They came out the last couple April 8ths, in fact, to <laughs> look at the sky and see really? the position. We had to think through what kinds of events we were going to be able to host here, the number of people we thought we would be able to serve. We've got about 7,000 people down here at the museum today, but that is a, that's at capacity for us. And then, um, of course, we've also got partnerships with Clyde Warren Park with the Cotton Bowl so that we can reach even more people. And, of course, partnerships with WFAA, uh, thank you for that because it has allowed us to be here, to take in, to enjoy, and uh, to really also just experience totality in a way that not a lot of people can around the world. So uh, t tell us about the partnership. So we feel so fortunate. We've had this exclusive arrangement with WFAA. You guys have helped us enormously in the outreach to the general public, reaching as many people as possible through your news vehicles to ensure that A, they knew the eclipse was coming, and B, how to really experience it safely and where in DFW they would be able to do that. Have you ever seen a total solar eclipse? I have not. I've been in two partial eclipses here in Dallas, 17 and 19, so I am really looking forward to later today. And that'll happen in 38 minutes. How are you feeling about that? A little nervous. I'm getting some goosebumps. I want the clouds to part so that we have as much visibility as we can, but I'm just excited. I want to be here in the moment. Talk about the meaning that today is for you. You know, the mission of the of the Perot Museum of Nature and Science is to inspire minds through nature and science, and I can't think of a better natural phenomenon to actually spark that interest, that inspiration, that curiosity around among children certainly, but all people in science. And have you seen that already here? Absolutely. Don't you feel it? Yes. I do feel it. Yeah. <laughs> Thousands of people are here. Yes, they yeah. are. And they're all smiling so far. <laughs> so what does this mean for the future of the Perot Museum? What's happening here today? Yep. Well, I think what we've done is we've um, attracted new um, audiences to come here to the museum. And we're, look for we're looking forward to continuing to work with those people and with our partners at Carnegie. Amazing. Dr. Silver, thank you so much. Thank you for partnering with us. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your leadership at the Perot Museum. You have such a fascinating background, and we're just blessed to have you here in Dallas. Well, we are appreciative of you and everything you do at WFAA, so thank you. Thank you so much. And speaking of just outreach, I mean, uh, we have crews scattered all across North Texas, but Kevin Reese actually caught up uh, with a couple, and I believe he's trying to chase some clear sky uh, in Little Rock, Arkansas. And you know, Kevin, I was actually in Little Rock for the eclipse in 2017. They were 89% eclipsed, and I was also at a museum there watching little minds just get inspired. So <laughs> how did you end up in Little Rock today? Well, actually, we are 
Let's see how much farther is that. We are in a little town called Russellville, Arkansas, kind of halfway between Little Rock and Fort Smith. This is the Russellville Eclipse Festival. You can see hundreds and hundreds of people have come from all over the world, and they are watching as the eclipse, as you know, is already underway. The reason we came here is that we met up with uh, a couple from as far away as the very north end of the country of Norway. We've met with them and they said they had decided they wanted to go to Sulphur Springs, Texas. That's what they had picked out on the map. And so they looked at Sulphur Springs this morning and it was cloudy in Sulphur Springs. So they said, there's one other place we heard of and here we are. This is Russellville, Arkansas, where the skies are clear, where I will be sunburned before the day is over and where the eclipse, we have a completely clear view. And so do all of these other people uh, about to enjoy the eclipse here in this small town. Uh, we're going to uh, be shooting that story here shortly as soon as we are done talking to you. But the good news is we did come far enough north. We followed the advice uh, of our weather team, Marielle and everybody else, to go as far north as we could. And we found this lovely eclipse festival here in Russellville, Arkansas. We'll be bringing you a story with our couple, uh, Ingva and Mai Antonsen, uh, who came here all the way from Norway. And we'll explain uh, to you at six o'clock tonight why this trip means so much to them. Back to you guys. Oh, wow, Kevin. I'm just loving the stories of eclipse chasers, people who travel all over the world to see total solar eclipses. I uh, heard the story of one man today who actually saw his first total solar eclipse as a little boy back in 1970 and has been chasing them ever since, even met his wife through chasing eclipses. That is just incredible. And that just goes to show you that the experience is so rare. It's so unique and it can't be mimicked. It can't be explained, but people know that once they do experience it, they want to feel it again. And I'll tell you what, it's already starting to feel a little cooler or am I just imagining things? No, I think you're right. Yeah, it is starting to feel a little bit cooler. So uh, whenever uh, we are in totality, temperature will continue to drop. And that's just because we do have a lack of solar radiation. You know, the sun comes through the atmosphere. It warms up the ground. The ground warms up the air. And that's how our temperature climbs every day. But with four minutes of no sun, I mean, that's that's going to limit our warming. Well, we are about a half hour away from the moment we have all been waiting for. I want to go to Matt Houston at the Fort Worth Botanic Garden, who has been speaking with people there as well. Matt, y'all will experience maximum totality for two minutes and 24 seconds. Are you ready? <laughs> I've had a long time to prepare, I guess you could say yes. And I will put it this way too. Kevin Reese didn't have to drive all the way to Northeast Arkansas to get a suntan today. We're getting a nice break in the clouds. Lots of people looking up. I want to step out so you can see the crowd here again. About 3,000 people reserve spots here at the Botanic Gardens. They're all spread out in this lovely vista right now between the trees, most of them looking up. Every time the uh, clouds roll on by, you'll see the heads kind of crane up and put the solar glasses up and get an opportunity to look at it. Lots of professional photographers out here trying to capture the moment. My favorite thing that I've seen so far, though, uh, there's a group of family right now. Uh, you probably won't be able to see it from where we are, but they're playing cornhole. And the setup of the cornhole is so that the wooden planks that you would throw the, the beanies into are the sun and the moon. And when the beanie drops in, it sort of makes its own form of eclipse. So lots of sort of thematic forms of entertainment today, topical, if you will. There are food trucks here. Again, about 3,000 people at the Botanic Gardens and all of them uh, really enjoying their time. We've seen champagne toast to this point already. I hear, and I'll say it quietly because they're close to us, I hear there's going to be a proposal at the time of totality. So lots to look forward to here. It's really been a unique opportunity for the people out here, and uh, they are enjoying their time. But again, you'll see a lot of umbrellas too because you got that sun breaking through. So that's certainly a good thing, a good time to remember the sunscreen. We'll send it back to you guys. Hey. All right, Matt Houston live at the Fort Worth Botanic Garden. And uh, now we want to talk about, once again, Dallas-Fort Worth International because there are hundreds of people on the rooftop there. Yeah, so we uh, were able to see just hundreds of people on the roof and Cole Sullivan is out there. Uh, okay, so you're hanging out with those people uh, on top of the airport. Uh, tell us more. 
Uh, yeah, we're among those hundreds of people who are here at the top of the airport right now. I'm going to step out of the way so you can see some of them. Some of these folks are traveling through. Some of these people are employees at the airport. But get this, there are some people who have actually just flown in just for the eclipse today, and then they have a flight to catch to go home this afternoon. So we talked to some folks who were in from Anchorage, Alaska. They left at 8 o'clock local time yesterday, last night. They arrived around 6, 7 o'clock this morning at DFW, came out to the top of parking garage C, which is where we are right here uh, at the C terminal, to watch the eclipse. They brought some snacks, they brought chairs, they brought some sunscreen because it's freezing cold and dark dark in Alaska right now, so they knew they'd need to be ready for the Texas uh, weather, um, and they're here to watch the eclipse. As soon as totality is over, they're rushing back inside, and they are going to catch a flight back to Alaska at 3.15 this afternoon. And you could just tell the mood here is folks are excited, they're happy to be here, uh, they've all got their eclipse glasses, and we're all waiting to see totality in just a few minutes. Back to you. Cold totality is happening right now in Mexico. I know, and you can see it from our NASA feed right here on your screen. <laughs> okay, so this is what we were talking about, the corona. Whenever we're in totality, you can see that very, very faint light all around uh, the moon that, that is completely covering the face of the sun, but not necessarily the corona, which is the outermost layer of the sun's atmosphere. So a lot of research is going into this because the corona is visible. And totality for us, 30 minutes and 30 seconds. Astronomer Tony Paul with Carnegie Science Observatory joins us now. Uh, just talk about this live picture we're looking at together. I mean, it's it's incredible, and you can see it yourself. Um, seeing the corona directly from the sun, it's really only possible during total solar eclipses. So this is, this is a really special event, and it only lasts for a few minutes depending where you are. So this is what you're out to see, for sure. And is this your first time in totality? This is my first time in totality. I missed the one in 2017, so I'm super excited. Yeah, and what's your background? Uh, yeah, so I, I'm an astronomer, so I got my PhD at uh, UCLA studying astronomy and astrophysics. I uh, just graduated in the last year, so I'm uh, now a postdoctoral fellow with uh, Carnegie Science Observatories. When did you become interested in the sky? Was it like when you were a little boy? When was it? Yeah, I think I was always interested in the sky. I remember my dad took me out to see a meteor storm when I was a kid. We had a, you know, we had a, we're in the middle of nowhere with our, uh, with our sleeping bags and hot chocolates just watching the sky. I mean, it was amazing. So I think, I think I've always been interested in, in, in space, but during my undergrad, I really found it as a career option. So. And I, and I love my job, what can I say? That is incredible. Well, you have been out just all week, uh, just going to different schools, right? Yeah, so Carnegie Science uh, partnered with the Perot Museum, and uh, Carnegie sent out about 25 astronomers, and we've been all over the Dallas area, elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, community centers, parks, uh, just been teaching people about the clips, get them excited and uh, making sure they see it safely. Yeah. Well, so what are you teaching them? As we look at this live picture of totality in Mexico, tell us what you've been teaching everyone this week. Yeah, so we're really teaching them kind of the basics of how it works, the orbit between the sun, the moon, and the earth. Here we can see the moon perfectly covering the sun, which doesn't happen in all uh, total solar, in all solar eclipses either. So a total solar eclipse only happens about in one in every four eclipses. So, but to see it, you really got to be in the path, right? Which is only about 100 miles wide, depending on the total solar eclipse. So, you, you really got to be in the right spot at the right time. And this path is actually so much different from the one in 2017 because it's Absolutely. a lot wider, right? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, I think this one is about 100 miles wide, which wow. is on the wider side. And you know what? Maria brings up a really good point. Total solar eclipses, we talk about people who chase them throughout the world. Right. They're not all the same. No, yeah, so the size, it all depends on the orbit of the moon, right? So depending on where the moon is in its orbit, it's going to lie in a different place on the Earth. And depending how far away it is, the size of the shadow is going to change. Depending on all those variables, it's going to move at a different speed, so you can see it for longer. The shadow will be bigger, so you can see it for longer or shorter. So there's a lot of different variables. And depending on how much it's covering up with the corona, that can also change depending on... Uh, the different kind of eclipse you're seeing. Totality is at 140. We're just That's a right. sh short while away. Uh, 27 minutes. Uh, how 20? Yeah, 27 minutes to be exact. So, uh, what's your best advice uh, for people who are preparing to watch it? Yeah, so I would say keep those eclipse glasses on right up until totality. You can watch the whole partial eclipse occurring through your glasses. You'll be able to watch the moon start to cover the sun as, as we're seeing in these feeds. Right at 140, you'll see the last of the sun disappear behind the moon. That's when it's safe to take off your glasses and look at the corona directly. So, 
Yeah, so right now in Mexico, you're seeing that totality because so you can see the corona around the moon. I think maybe totality is starting to end, so you can start to see the sun again around the moon. And again, right when you start to see the sun again poking out from behind the moon, really important, put your eclipse glasses back on to watch the rest of the partial eclipse happen. So. Amazing, and that's from Mazatlan, Mexico, where they are experiencing totality. And eventually, we'll experience it too in 26 minutes. And that's talk right. about that, that glow that we're seeing there on the edge there as it disappears. Yeah, so it's called the corona. So just like how the Earth has air around it in its atmosphere, the sun also has air around it in its atmosphere. Because the sun is so bright and so active, its atmosphere is lit up. Right? So even when you have all the light from the sun covered, you can still look at its atmosphere directly with your eyes. And again, only possible during a total solar eclipse. And we're just seeing so many people out there enjoying the sights already. It already looks just so incredible. What are you most excited about? Uh, yeah, I'm excited. I've heard, I haven't experienced it again myself, but I've heard it's a, it's a really a full body experience. You know, the, it gets darker out. It's, the temperature drops about five to 10 degrees. If you're in like a park or somewhere where there are birds, the birds will start chirp, stop chirping. So you'll feel it, you'll hear it, you'll see it. But I hear it's a really, a really beautiful experience. So I'm like super excited. You know, one thing I've been thinking about throughout, you know, as we've been preparing for this moment, Tony, is wow, wow, look at that gorgeous shot there. Wow. Uh, you think about 2,000 years ago when they experienced the total solar eclipse, didn't have the science we have today. Imagine right. what must have been happening then. Yeah, there were certainly, there were religious experiences back then. So they certainly, I mean, just like the, you know, just like. Uh, now, imagine if it just got dark, like the night, in the middle of the day. I mean, I personally would have no idea what was going on. <laughs> I, I was, yeah, so hey, I can imagine back in the day, without knowing what we know about astronomy and how exactly these are happening, how often they happen, um, especially because they don't happen in the same place very often either. One, about once every 300 years, they happen in the same place. So, so once know. in a lifetime. Once sure. in a lifetime, for did sure. Did you travel here today, or do you live here? I did travel here. So okay. Carnegie Science Observatories, where a lot of us astronomers are based out of, is in Pasadena, California. So I flew out around Tuesday, and I've been here all week uh, talking to people, and I get to see it, which is amazing. I'm super excited. Well, we are so excited to all experience it together uh, and now only 24 minutes away. It does feel a little bit cooler, but I am seeing a little more cloud cover as well. So I am hoping that it starts to uh, continues to clear out, I should say. All right. So, Tony, Paul, we're going to see how, how good you are with uh, total solar eclipse trivia. Okay. Ooh, are Let's you ready? ready? I'm ready. I'm okay. ready. Okay. <laughs> Y'all so ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Number one, what is the name of the moon's dark inner shadow during totality? I think it is called the, so the outer shadow where you see the partial eclipse, I think that's the penumbra. Correct. So the inner part is the umbra. You got that yeah, correct. correct. Yes, okay. Tony, you want Alrighty. to take number two? All right, right, all right, the next one. When was the last total solar eclipse in the United States? In the United States? That was in 2017. Good I think job. it went through Idaho and Montana. Yeah. That's right, 2017, yeah. all right. Okay. Number three, when is the next total solar eclipse in the United States? Okay, so there's, I think there's two different answers to this question. We're talking about the continental United continental. States. Continental. Yeah, continental. That's 2044, but Correct. actually Alaska, 2033, if you want to oh, go Oh, so there. sooner yeah. in Alaska. Number Amazing. four. Okay, what is the maximum length of totality for the, for the solar eclipse this time? This time? I don't know if I know the exact number. I know it's close to four minutes. I would say a few seconds after four minutes, depending on where you are. Uh, so maybe in the U.S. So Mexico, uh, okay, NASA's okay. Mexico. Yeah, uh, four minutes, 28 seconds. Right, That'll right. be the maximum wow. length of totality awesome. uh, for this eclipse. All right, Tony. When is the next total solar eclipse here in North Texas? I know that one is going to be in 2317, yeah, I believe. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> you're real I've studied good. up, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, when was the last total solar eclipse over Dallas? 1876, I think. Close. So long oh, 1867? 1878. Oh, so close. 1870. So close. I know, so many numbers, right? <laughs> so on average, this is kind of a tricky one. On average, how frequent is a total solar eclipse in any one place. Oh, that's a tough one. I would say close to once every, total solar eclipse? Yes. Once every two years, about. So approximately. Every 375 For years. For one place. Oh, in one, one place. One oh, yeah. place. Yeah, close to 300 yeah. years. Sorry, but I thought you meant right, somewhere on the earth. It's one, once yeah, every two years. But once, <laughs> yeah, around the world. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, so you were all right. right. All right. This was, it was just uh, phrased a little differently. Okay, this one's fun. 
right. What is the scientific term for the alignment of celestial bodies during an eclipse? Mm, that's a great question. I don't know if I know this one. So if anyone knows this at home, you're, you know more than an astronomer. That's what I'll say. <laughs> oh, okay. Here, it's coming up for you. Maybe you can pronounce it for us. I think the syzygy. I, I have heard that term, but yeah, I, I, I guess I didn't remember. A syzygy, I think, is what it is. Okay. I didn't know how to pronounce it. That's okay. why I was hoping you right. would say it for us. <laughs> See, I would have said syzygy, but what do I know? <laughs> okay. So number nine, a person, which I believe you've already answered this, a person right. experiencing a partial eclipse is standing in the shadow of what? That's the penumbra. So that's way bigger than the umbra. So, so here's a real good question. I don't know if you'll know the answer to this. If okay. you do, wow, you get a big prize. All right. Okay, which two states will get four total solar eclipses this century? This century. So I know the one in 2044 goes through Florida, I think. So I'll guess Florida, but okay. I'm not sure. Okay, the two states are actually Texas and okay. Georgia. Close. Close yes, to Texas is a good place to be for eclipses <laughs> awesome. this century. <laughs> well, thank you so much for playing thank along, you. and thank, thank you. you so much for joining us. Of course. I, I hope you enjoy uh, the eclipse, the totality that is happening uh, now in 20 minutes. That's awesome. right, and we have a live picture right now. This is happening right now, Tony, in Mexico. Wow, it is dark. Wow. Wow. Okay, so you see totality there on the right-hand side, but on the left-hand side, you see how dark it is. Uh, and that's, is, I believe that's Mazatlan. Is where the, yeah, the Mazatlan. Is. And I can only imagine what is happening there with the, with the animals like we talked about, with the plants, uh, uh, the people there um, taking this in right now. And I know for one, as tempting as it is to grab your cell phone and want to take selfies at this moment, I'm not going to do it. Oh, that's going to be tough for me, Cynthia. <laughs> I just want to feel it totally, and I, I can only imagine that the memory will be just sealed forever. So who Absolutely. needs a picture of it? Yeah, and uh, yeah, like, like we were mentioning, just uh, life-changing, right? Uh, okay, so Ennis has been a hot spot uh, today because they have actually seen a lot of clear skies. And Ennis, Texas, one of the places with the longest amount of time in totality with four minutes and 24 seconds. Uh, Paige McCoy Smith is out there. Uh, so uh, we're going to check in with her. But man, those images out of Mexico are just incredible. It looks so dark there. Yeah, it's so dark. And uh, just looking at the, the just yeah, the yeah. total darkness and it's, it's, I can't wait for it to happen here, which yeah. we're not far at all. Uh, Paige McCoy-Smith is in Ennis. We also have Matt Howerton in Ennis. Paige, tell me what people have been telling you out in Ennis today. I'm telling you, it isn't dark yet, but it uh, can start to see it starting to get a little darker. But one of the reasons why is because the sun is out. We are not having a lot of too much cloud cover. It's really going to be pretty clear. We're all keeping our fingers close. I have got some more people from across the pond. This is Faye, Steph, and Connor, and they're from all the way from Great Britain. Tell us, what was it that made you decide, we're going to pack it up, we're going to come over here, we're going to experience this? Well, we were lucky enough to see the eclipse in 2017 in Oregon, and after that, it was just, we had to see another one, you know. What is it that's so meaningful to you to see the eclipse? I think it's a really special event that you don't get very often, and uh, it's good to do it as a family. Yeah. And so this is a family? Yeah, so yeah. my daughter and Connor's my son. Okay, oh my gosh, y'all look like sisters. <laughs> so we've got Faye as your daughter, Connor as your son. So Connor, do you share the same passion for science and for these kinds of moments as your mom and your sister do? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I did an astronomy uh, qualification at school, so I'm really into it. So can't wait to see it. I'm really looking forward to it. Is this your first time in Texas? Yes, yes it is. Oh, well, let me give you a big hi, y'all. That's the, that's the slogan for Ennis. What has your experience like been here in the Lone Star State? It's been so lovely. Everyone is so friendly. The food is incredible. And you get an eclipse, so it's pretty good. It's all the way around, and I'm so glad that you have had a warm welcome. That's how we do it here in the South, particularly in Texas. And I've got to say, these people really know how to party. You have been dancing the entire time, gearing up and getting so excited. What is one of the things that you're going to be bring, bringing back to um, Great Britain, memory that you might have other than just seeing the total eclipse? I think the friendliness of the people. They've been fantastic, and Ennis in particular know how to party. They certainly do. And can I also mention my husband, Charlie? He's looking after the bags. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, Charlie, we wish you would come and join us, but because this is indeed a family affair, and this has been so much fun, guys. All right, it's, we're really in the countdown now. I think we've just got maybe a little over 15, 17 minutes before we're getting ready for that total eclipse. Let's have that, and, and once again, welcome, y'all. We're glad that you... Yeah, thanks very much. I'll send it back. Paige, thank you so much. It looks like you're having so much fun. And you saw Paige and in Ennis just on the bottom left hand of your screen, but the rest of the screen, you are actually seeing uh, an image from Russellville, Arkansas. I believe it has changed now, but you could see uh, now it's in Junction, Texas, that image. But in Russellville, Arkansas, you could see uh, the moon just covering up the sun, and that's what we're experiencing uh, here as well. It's just a beautiful sight. And you can see Russellville now back on your screen. So you can see the moon taking up more and more of the sun. Eventually it'll be uh, in totality. Just can't wait for that moment. And we are just, geez, 20 minutes away. Less than 20, yes. Yes, 16 minutes away. Uh, Sean Giggy is here at the Perot Museum on the grounds here talking with people from all over the world. Sean, who are you with right now? Well, you mentioned I'm with people from all over the world. I've got to admit, I was getting a little discouraged. We keep saying that, people from all over the world. Before our, our Eclipse special started on WFA Plus, I was talking to people as they were coming in the gate, and they were telling me I'm from Washington, D.C., from Wichita, Kansas, all over the place. But ever since our show started, I keep going up to people, and they're like, I'm from Dallas, I'm from Dallas, I'm from Dallas, I'm from Plano. I'm like, where did all the out-of-towners go? Well, man, did I find the perfect one right here. We got a couple back here from San Francisco, but I found the perfect guy right here this was meant to be because I'm here with Sean, spelled S-E-A-N. This is my man right here. And he came from Saskatchewan, up in Canada. Why did you come from Canada? This path of totality goes across a large chunk of the United States. Why come to Dallas for it? Well, we did some research. It was cursory research with some Google searching, and uh, we just wanted the best odds of clear skies, and Dallas was the place with a large population and a nice place to visit and see some ball games as well. You say the best odds, all right? Oh, the sun's po poking out right now. <laughs> don't, don't look up with, the, with, my, with my naked eye. But I thought for a second, I'm like, oh, it's getting overcast, and then I forgot we're having an eclipse. Are you, we're about maybe 10 minutes away, 10 to 15 minutes away. Are you feeling optimistic that yeah. those clouds are going to stay away? Uh, they're dispersing really nicely right now. It's looking really good, really good. And have you enjoyed your time in Dallas aside from the eclipse? Yeah, we've had a great time here, yeah, for sure. Well, we're glad to have you. Thanks for joining me, Sean. This was just meant to be. That's a great name, great spelling, you know, good man right here. We also have over here, we have this gentleman. I'm not, I won't ask you any questions, but I just want to point out, you're from Virginia. Right. You said... You brought your grandson. Your dad took you to a total solar eclipse 50 years ago. His dad took your dad to a solar eclipse. So this is like a fa I Maybe I'll ask you a question real quick. This is like a family tradition. Why'd you want to bring your grandson? Uh, to show him, keep the tradition going, and uh, they can take me uh, and 4040. 4044. <laughs> All right, we got 20 years. Well, get those glasses ready because we're getting close to totality. Guys. I gotta stop talking because we are getting close to the moment we've all waited for. It's beautiful right now, but it's about to get better. Back to you guys. Thank you, Sean. We have been in a partial eclipse for well over an hour now. We have totality, which begins at 140. Peak totality, Mariel, at 142. Totality ends at 144. Right, and here in Dallas, we will experience totality for three minutes and 51 seconds. That is going to vary across all of North Texas. So the areas that are highest in totality will be towards the east and the southeast. Think about Ennis, Kaufman County. We'll see some of the highest times in totality in North Texas. Texas, it'll be Ennis with four minutes and 24 seconds. Uh, and uh, areas like Fort Worth, so the more west you are, you'll experience totality less. But either way, sure to be an incredible sight. And we have been taking peaks ourselves of the sun. I'm just, just, I'm just grateful to you, Maria, because you keep reminding me to put on my uh, protective eyewear and look up, and it is divine. I mean, I love what I'm seeing now. I can't imagine what's to come here in the next couple of minutes. And you can feel it's getting a little cooler. It is cooling down. It's getting a little windier. Um, Dr. Josh Simon with Carnegie Science Observatories is here with us this afternoon. And Dr. Simon, can you kind of take us through what we should expect? be expecting here in the next few minutes? Yeah, so uh, it will continue getting darker and cooler as we get closer and closer to, to totality. And then at 1.40, the sky will, will get completely dark, like it's nighttime in the middle of the day. 
and we'll have four minutes to enjoy the view of the sun's corona, which you, can, uh, uh, you can't see any time other than a total solar eclipse. We should be able to see several of the planets in the sky and possibly even a comet. A comet. That's the yes. first time I've heard of a comet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about that definitely in the next half hour. So I'm really excited to geek out with you here uh, in the next 30 minutes uh, as we continue our coverage here from the Perot Museum. Uh, are you ready? You know what? I, I'm definitely ready. I mean, this is a moment we've been planning for at WFAA and partnered with the Perot Museum for well over a year. We've been studying. We have been gathering all the facts and data that we possibly can. And really, there are three goals today, my dear. Uh, number one, to experience this together. Number two, to learn something, which I really feel we have learned so much from the astronomers here. And last, to have fun. Yeah, to have fun. And I'm certainly see doing that alongside you a long time uh, alongside our astronomers and with everyone here at the Perot and we are about to join WFAA live on air stand by the total solar eclipse is here a once in a lifetime event we won't see for another 300 years in the next 10 minutes, North Texas will be cast into the moon's shadow and total darkness. Hundreds of thousands of visitors who want the best view. Will clouds spoil the show? We have crews spread out to show you North Texas's darkest day. Live from the Perot Museum, it's the total solar eclipse experience on WFAA. And we begin our live coverage with a live look at the thousands who have come to the Perot Museum to experience today's total solar eclipse day, which is finally here in North Texas. And welcome back, everyone. Thank you for staying with us as our coverage started today at noon on WFAA+. It did. It started at noon, and now we're joining you live because in just 10 minutes, we will experience a total solar eclipse. We will be in totality here in North Texas, and we're already seeing uh, the changes. I want to welcome you to our coverage here of the total solar eclipse, uh, truly a once-in-a-lifetime experience. And, and you'll notice we have lights on us right now. Uh, we... Uh, are going to completely turn them off in as we approach totality, which is at 140. That way we can experience it alongside with you and we can show you what it will actually look like whenever we are in darkness, whenever the sun is not shining. Yes, and again, totality begins at 140, so we are nine minutes away. When totality begins, we're just going to be quiet mm -hmm. so that we can take this all in and experience whatever it is we're going to experience together. Dr. Josh Simon with Carnegie Science Observatories has joined us this afternoon to really guide us through what to expect leading up to totality here in just a few minutes. Yes, and thank Welcome. you for joining us. Yeah, thank you both. Uh, okay, so we're a few so minutes away. What can we expect in nine minutes? Well, so it's going to continue getting darker and cooling off as we approach totality. The sky is going to start getting dark, and then when we hit totality, it will look like nighttime, but right, right now in the middle of the day. Yeah, I mean, it is 1.32 in the afternoon, and we'll see the sun completely blocked in eight minutes. And we're showing you a picture, too, of uh, folks at DFW Airport, yes, I believe. on the rooftop. Uh, on the rooftop, and everyone just in awe, everyone prepared, everyone with their solar uh, glasses on, and I believe now showing you a picture of Fair Park, but so many people out there, Cynthia. Yeah, Fair Park in downtown Dallas, and we want to welcome all of you who have traveled here to North Texas from all across the world to view this total solar eclipse together. Welcome, we're glad you're here. And I wanna go now to Sean Giggy, who is here at the Perot Museum talking with people and waiting for the big moment. We're just seven minutes away, Sean. Guys, we are on the lawn right in front of the Perot Museum where I'd say at least a few hundred, if not more than a thousand people have, have posted up over here to get a good view of. We've got a good unobstructed view. The clouds are out of the way right now. We are just minutes away from totality. Um, I see some clouds around it, but it looks like they're they're not moving in, in the in the way, in the path that they're going to block the sun. So I think we're going to be good here, here in a few minutes to see totality. Um, just putting my glasses on right now. We've got just a sliver, I'm sure. Uh, if we have a feed of that, I'm sure you can see, uh, or if 
you happen to be outside streaming us on the app, uh, wherever you are, you can probably see that there's just a sliver of the sun left uh, here from the Perot Museum. All right, and you are watching a live picture of this totality. Totality happening right now in Kerrville, Maria. Wow, okay, so Kerrville, that's Texas. That's the Texas Hill Country, and we are not too far away from our own totality, and you can see it there just completely dark. It's a little bit more cloudy there than it is here, and you know right now, Cynthia, I don't want to jinx it, but we have a blue sky right underneath the sun. Uh, and, and you can see on our feed, you can see our image. It's getting darker and darker. We currently have lights on us, but we will be turning off the lights for totality, and that happens at 1.40. Dr. Simon, let's talk about watching totality. All eyes are looking upward. At safest way to do it, of course, is with the eclipse glasses. So until totality, you have to uh, keep the eclipse glasses on when you're looking at the sun in order to avoid damaging your eyes. Once we hit 1.40 p.m. and the sun is totally blocked, then it's safe to take off the glasses and see the sun's corona. What you're watching right now is Dallas, the partial eclipse happening right now over Dallas. Have you ever seen a total solar eclipse? I have not. I've seen uh, several partial solar eclipses, but I've never been to a total eclipse, and so I'm very excited to see what it looks like in five minutes. <laughs> okay, so, but I know you haven't seen it yourself, but what can we expect? Well, so during totality, we should be able to see the sun's corona. That's its outer atmosphere. The only time you can ever see that from the Earth is during a total solar eclipse. Normally, the sun's light is too bright to uh, let us see that, that faint uh, material streaming off of the sun. And Dr. Simon, we're looking at a live picture uh, from Fort Worth right now where they're going to have a totality of just over two minutes. So that's that live picture that we're looking at right now. What can we expect during totality? We keep hearing about the animals doing uh, uh, weird things and the plants closing up. Yeah, so it, it will get as dark as nighttime here. And so a lot of natural things uh, think that, that it's night. Of course, it will only last for about four minutes. And so they'll get a little surprise if they're getting ready to go to bed uh, and, and need to get ready for another few hours of daytime after. Okay, and as we approach totality, um, we're noticing the shadows changing. And we can see those images right there on the bottom left hand of your screen. So you have the uh, partial eclipse on the right and the shadows on the left. Can you walk us through those crescent-shaped shadows? Yeah, so what you're seeing is effectively the leaves of a tree acting as a pinhole camera. So normally, uh, the, sh the light coming from the sun is, is filtered through tiny holes in the leaves, and we just see a, a, a circle because that's what the sun looks like most of the time. During uh, an eclipse, then we actually get the, the shape of the sun in real time, uh, imaged by uh, these effective cameras. Uh, that are created naturally from the leaves. And I'm looking around, and I, there are people just literally lying on the ground right now. They've got their, uh, eye gl their solar glasses on. They're looking up at the sky. Everyone's got a smile on their face right now. Yeah, I'm seeing yeah. people laying down, and it's, it's quiet out here. Yeah, it has yeah. definitely quieted <laughs> down quite a bit, and everybody's attention is pretty much focused on the sun right now. What does this mean to you, this moment? Well, it's just, it's one of those things that is uh, pretty rare for anybody to experience. Uh, and a, a total solar eclipse only happens at any given place uh, every few hundred years. That's correct. And so uh, we're, we're lucky to be here in Dallas for this one. Uh, the next one here will not be until the 24th century. Yeah, so uh, 300 years or so. Yeah. Uh, so truly a once in a lifetime experience. Uh, tell us here in the last few minutes, I mean, we are three minutes away. Yep. What, what are you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> it is getting uh, a lot Cooler. darker here. It, it's a little bit hard to tell with the lights still on us, but uh, I'm expecting those will be turned off pretty soon. And it hey, definitely does not feel like daytime anymore. Yeah. And uh, we're, we can hear the announcers behind us. They are just letting everyone know that we have just a couple of minutes left until totality. And, and again, we are going to be turning off the lights for the duration of totality. There they go. And there they go. So our lights are turned off so that you can experience it. If you can't experience it yourself, uh, you can keep it tuned right here. And just a reminder, we're also going to be uh, quiet during the yeah, total we eclipse. Are. When, that, uh, when totality begins here at, in two minutes and 26 seconds, we're going to go quiet. Peak totality, don't forget, is at 142. All right, Dr. Simon, I'm going to do what you're doing. You have uh, put on your solar 
sunglasses. I'm going to put mine on as well here. Oh, wow, that's awfully dark. I'll wait for a couple of minutes. But yeah, all eyes are in the sky right now. We're just two minutes away. Okay, what should we be doing right now, Dr. Simon? Well, everybody should still have their eclipse glasses on, looking up at the sun. You'll just see a tiny sliver of the sun remaining. Uh, but as long as that is still visible, then you need to have the eclipse glasses on. And in less than two minutes, we can take them off and experience totality. I'm already getting chills. <laughs> <laughs> what is your hope today? Uh, my hope has just been that the clouds will give us a good view. And fortunately, it looks like they're cooperating. Maria? Yeah, I mean the same. I'm looking around, Cynthia, and I see little kids. Uh, and I see them with their parents, with their grandparents, just with their families. And uh, they're silent. They're, they're putting on their glasses. They're looking up. And, I, you know, the last time I witnessed a, a partial solar eclipse, and one of my favorite things to this day that I remember is uh, just the new generation being inspired by science. I, I was so young when my love for math and science grew and, you know, it, that's going oh to flourish God. today. We're, we're gaining a whole new generation of astronomers. We are one minute away. Uh, we have crews all over North Texas uh, getting ready to experience this really true, really awe-inspiring moment. I mean, the partial eclipse has been hey guys, incredible today. And uh, here we are, 49 seconds away, and the announcers here at the Perot Museum reminding everyone to keep the solar glasses on until it's safe to take them off. You can hear the cheers in the background. Wow. As we are approaching the moment, yeah, and I mean, again, we're going to be silent so that you can take it in as well, but Izzy, it is getting dark, dark here in downtown Dallas. It sure is, just 20 seconds away. Maria, here it is, the moment you've been waiting for for a long time. A long time, years. Uh, Ten-year-old me cannot believe that I'm here covering this event with you, Cynthia. Well, I'll tell you what, as we count down, we have just seconds left. We're going to... Uh, Mute it and let you take it in, North Texas. Three, two, one. Safe to take the glasses off. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> There's the corona. It's clear. You can see Venus and Jupiter quite clearly also. Is that uh, Jupiter right there? That's Venus to the right of the sun, Jupiter to the left, a bit farther away. We can even see some prominences right object to uh, the right on the top of the sun. Venus. I can't see it from the stage, but you guys can probably see it. So if you look out about five o'clock on the face of the sun, there's a bright dot towards the bottom. I think that's a solar flare that you can see with the naked eye. Yeah. 
and we have less than a minute of totality left. So get your glasses ready. All right, so people should start putting those glasses back on. We've only got a few seconds left, so put those glasses back on. And we'll see the diamond ring come out the other oh my side. Gosh. Wow. There we go. <laughs> wow. All right, my dear. All right, keep those glasses you know, on. You can keep watching uh, the partial they were eclipse. Great. And thank I don't think, you for being patient I don't with think us I can explain it. It's what an incredible feeling to witness that with thousands of people here at the Perot Museum. Total darkness. And it was, the sky was completely clear. I, for days, was forecasting high cloud cover and I saw none of it. So that allowed us to perfectly see the, the corona. We even saw the solar flare. I mean, right now the sun is in a really interesting uh, stage where there's just a lot of activity. And we were able to see that with the naked eye. I don't think many people in the world can say that. <laughs> Dr. Simon, what's your reaction? Um, it's just, it's unlike anything that I've ever seen before. It, it's a natural phenomenon that happens so rarely that really it, it's completely unique. <laughs> and you have to be here to experience it. Here comes the sun. Yeah, so the band right now uh, on the stage behind us is playing Here Comes the Sun because the sun is returning. And surely, slowly but surely, everything will return back to normal. Dr. Simon, we were able to see Venus and Jupiter as well, plus yes. that solar flare that Maria mentioned. That's right. Uh, we could have seen Mars and Saturn as well, but there happened to be a building in the way of uh, getting to those. <laughs> Well, we want to get back out to Sean Giggy, who has been waiting for this moment all morning. Sean, was it everything you'd hoped it would be? Oh, my gosh. Uh, uh, if you've been watching throughout the day, I've said a couple times that I love space. Um, I'm more so, especially rocketry, astronauts, and, and space exploration. Um, but still, like, I didn't think... I'm, I'm a big softie, so I'll preface it with that, but I didn't think I would be as emotional as I was. I was, my, my eyes were welling up with tears there. It was just, just to think of, like, how beautiful our universe is and how we're just such a small piece of it. And not only that, but humanity has, has perfected the science and the math and the physics to figure out years and years in advance that that's going to happen. They're able to give... The, the smart, smartest people in the world are able to give us this experience because they can plan on it. They know when it's going to happen. And just to be able to have that experience in this giant universe, there's no other planet that, that you can see an eclipse like that. Not on Mars, not on Jupiter, n nowhere, because their moons and the sun, just the perspective, the distance from them, it's not the same. We just can't get that on any of their planets. So the, how fortunate we are to, to have that is as incredible. I just want to ask real quick, I'm sitting next to Sean still, Sean from Saskatchewan. Was it worth it to come all the way down here? Uh, more more than I could ever imagine, yes. Yeah, I didn't think I'd need Kleenex, but um, brought tears to my eyes, it was amazing. Awesome, same to me, my tears were willing up in my eyes. I, I'll, I'll send it back to you guys. I mean, that's all I can say. I, I feel like I'm mostly speechless, but uh, gosh, awesome. Back to you guys. Yeah, ditto, Sean, you know, and, and like uh, the gentleman you just interviewed, yeah, I got, a, I got a tear in my eye, too, because it's just, it's, it's magical, and, and it, it's such a reminder of how minuscule we are here on this planet, and to look at everyone, I can't think of a better way than science and something like today happening to bring everyone together. It's days like today that is inspiring the next uh, generation, and, and how Sean was saying, uh, 
they were able to calculate this right down to the second. And it's because of math and it's because of science and it's because of people that love math and science that go into uh, the fields, that go and do the research and really allow us to enjoy and prepare for these events. And my dear, it really cooled down here. Uh huh. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure. I wish I had a thermometer close by. Yeah. I, I'm going to have to ask Pete. I'm going to have to ask Pete uh, to see what uh, the temperature drop was here in the last few minutes. But yeah, without solar radiation, you're not going to see the, the temperature climb. And I have really been enjoying Brittany Moncrease's enthusiasm and in her live shots over the last couple of hours on WFAA Plus and now here on WFAA Live on the Air. Brittany, what did you think? Look, I am speechless. I was that little kid that wanted to be an astronaut when I got older, went to space camp and everything. So this is the closest that I get to that. And man, man, it was amazing. I'm, I'm glad that we kind of just were quiet and able to really take it in and sink it in because you, you, you had to really experience it all, what you smell, what you hear, what you see, everything. And so I have some students with me here from J. Long Middle School, J. L. Long Middle School. I have Matthew and I have Boston. Now, Matthew, I know you want to work for NASA one day. Yes, right. So tell me what this whole experience like was. It was absolutely incredible. Um, I'm going to remember that for the rest of my life. Absolutely. What about you, Boston? Same here. That was the craziest thing I've ever experienced in real life. I am so happy to be here right now. Did it meet your expectations? The, the, the expectation bar is gone. It's just <laughs> blown up. There's it's nothing broken. left. Yeah. That was, that was absolutely crazy. <laughs> so amazing, right? It is, ma'am. Absolutely. And the, the crazy thing is, it'll be another thing. 300 years before we experience it here in Dallas, but there will be other total eclipse around the world that, I don't know, maybe you might become an eclipse chaser, you know, you never know. <laughs> We're going to send it back to you all back at the Perot. All right, Brittany, thank you. One thing's for sure, we will never forget what we just experienced. Absolutely not, and you've heard Brittany and Sean say it. I mean, speechless. Look at the little kids just enjoying it, just ecstatic after witnessing what they did witness. Uh, and I'm going to have to just, I, I don't think I'm over it yet. I, I need to take it all in still. You'll have to write it all down tonight. And yeah. they say the best time to write it all down is tonight while mm. it's fresh on the mind. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to journal after this. But, okay, so we've been talking about Dallas. I want to check in with Matt Houston. Uh, he is in Fort Worth at the Botanic Garden. Uh, Matt, how was your view? I hope it was just as stunning as ours. The clouds broke in the perfect way, the best way you could possibly imagine, and we got to see that. You got to see sort of the ring of fire around the sun, right? You heard loud cheers as soon as it got dark, as we inched nearer toward totality, uh, and then all of a sudden it gets dark and the cheers continue, and then it was almost dead silent. You had some chitter chatter here and there, but for the most part it was quiet. And it really gives you a perspective on humanity in a way. In fact, we talked to a couple of people as it was happening and even after uh, who said it really, you know, it reminds you how small we are, but also how big the sun and the moon are. And that's such a fascinating perspective to get from all of this. Truly a once in a lifetime event here in Fort Worth and across North Texas, guys. Matt, thank you so much Aww. for that update. I'm so glad that those clouds broke just in time and that you could experience this too. I mean, look at this. Uh, everyone just enjoying post-total eclipse uh, feelings there, dancing along to the music. Just absolutely incredible. And we want to go way up to the rooftop of the Perot Museum with Janelle Fort. And Janelle, what was that like? You probably had the best vantage point of all of us. You know what? I wasn't sure what to expect. And I just remember the moment that totality hit. And you know, that you feel that strangeness kind of leading up to that moment. And then it's just this truly amazing, remarkable spectacle that we got to see up here. Um, I know a lot of the astrologers today have been talking about uh, the corona and the plasma that is around the sun that we only get a glimpse of during these total, total solar eclipse moments. Um, we saw some of that plaza jumping around from up here. I'd been following the wildlife. So there were birds flying leading up to it. And then, you know, what happens is 
Mother Nature sets in, those birds landed. We saw a butterfly come up here, was acting a little erratic just before totality, and then flew down. So it was just really a remarkable experience, a once in a lifetime experience that we were able to get from this just really, truly incredible viewpoint. I'm gonna send it back to you guys down below. Janelle, thank you so much. Uh, from uh, the rooftop of the Perot, one of the best uh, sites uh, of the total eclipse. Thanks for your insight from up there. And uh, the butterflies and the birds just also, uh, you know, experiencing totality alongside with us. So now the big question will be, how does North Texas handle all of these crowds leaving all of the events across our area. Let's go to Tashara Parker with a view of what we're seeing right now, Tashara. Yeah, and look, we have not seen anything too crazy right now. I mean, there's a total solar eclipse that we just got to experience. Boy, when I tell you that was a scene and just to actually experience it outdoors, oh, you just felt the chills come over your body. Come on over here. Let's go ahead and get to these cameras and show them what's going on. Your drive is wide open. Remember from 1 to 2 p.m. DPD send, did send out some information saying those exits as you're trying to get off uh, moving through parts of downtown Dallas, we're going to be closed. So if you're trying to get onto the freeway, you should be all right. All right. So just be mindful of that. I do want to cycle through some of my cameras. That is right at Phil Street Station. If you can help me out with those cameras and go to the next one for me so I can show you what exactly is happening here. We do have some other shots. This one is down in Waxahachie, Ellis County. We know a lot of you watched it out that way. So your drive looks good. 35E right at 77. The last shot here that I'll show you also Ellis County. This is right at Parker Hill coming up and down 45. Your drive looks good. There's a wide shot of your map. Again, no major delays for you. This is that area that I mentioned to you that DPD warned us about to make sure that if you're trying to move in and around downtown Dallas, you're not going to be able to get onto the highway, exit the highway, I should say, as you're making your way through the downtown Dallas Mixmaster. I know we've been covering several areas and North Texas is a huge area, so I want to bring in Stacia Wilson to help us get around some of those other delays this this afternoon, Stacia. Yeah, I think to share what really helped with this situation, there were all kinds of events going on, but it was also something that most of us could just walk out our front door and see, literally, from the step of your home. So that definitely just kind of, I think, kept people grounded and it has not been bad from what we've seen. Of course, a lot of changes on the way, including weather conditions that could definitely inf uh, influence our situation involving traffic on the roadways. Tarrant County, you can see uh, your map's been pretty green since uh, late this morning. You haven't really had any major issues out there. And as I mentioned before, though, we could be facing some intense traffic as we head into the evening rush hour. So just looking at some cameras for you. So Tarrant County, uh, right along 820, I believe, I think it's covered it. That is where you just basically have nobody on the roadways. If we're also checking some additional cameras, there, tashara has got me. This is another shot of Tarrant County. Also Kaufman County we were looking at. No problems there. Denton County and Collin County all look good. All right, back to you. All right, Stacia, thank you. And imagine all of the young astronomers who are out here today watching this total solar eclipse just happen. And just being inspired and learning and learning alongside us, having fun alongside us. Thank you so much, y'all, for trusting us to cover this event alongside you and bringing us into your homes to experience totality together. Dr. Simon, final thoughts? Well, so, you know, my colleagues from Carnegie Science and I have been spread out across Dallas visiting schools and, and other locations for the last several days. The most common question that we got is, would the clouds actually allow us to see totality? And I'm just really grateful that there was a, uh, a hole in the clouds, the sky cleared up just at the perfect moment, and we got the amazing view that we were hoping for. How did it, how did you feel? I, it was just a sense of awe. You know, it, like I said earlier, it's something that is totally unlike anything else that I have ever experienced, I think that you have ever experienced either. Tell us what it felt like to see the solar flare. The um, little yeah. dot on the side. Yeah, so I could see a couple of those bright red spots on the edges of the sun. Those are plumes of gas that are being ejected by the sun. Uh, and of course, this is really the only possible time that you can see those with your eyes. What do you make of all the people dancing and the reaction right after totality? I saw my own 11-year-old son right over there jumping up and down right after it ended. Wow, so you got to bring your son with you to enjoy. Yeah, I did. What's that like? 
Um, well, it, you know, it's really cool to have my family here to experience this. I've never been to a total solar eclipse before, and I'm, I'm really glad that they got to see this one. Wow. Final just, thoughts for you, Maria? It was, it was absolutely incredible. Uh, thank you for allowing me to sit next to you to cover this. No. It, was, it was so fun you know. to learn alongside you, and thank you for pointing out the planets for me. Uh, it, just, it, it made it just an, an incredibly unique experience, and truly just reminds me that I'm in the right field because I love our sky, and I love our atmosphere, and I love learning, and I, I'm just, I love that I got to witness the next generation of scientists. Well, I just love your guidance today, Maria, truly. And really, your enthusiasm and your knowledge, was it everything that you had hoped it'd be? It was, it was so much more. I don't think I expected it. It's overwhelming. Another thing that I'm thinking about just personally, as I look at all the moms here with their children, are my own children who are experiencing this at school today. I want to thank our educators so much, our schools across North Texas, for making sure that our students got the ultimate experience also. I didn't have to worry about my, bringing my kids here today because I knew that you would take care of it at school. Thank you so very, very much. Oh, that's just, I, I love that they're getting to experience this alongside their peers. And this reminder, everyone, uh, several astronomers have told me, don't forget to write down, journal what you witnessed today, both here on the air and if you witnessed it in person, uh, just so that you'll always remember it from these very moments. Yeah, and uh, just, I, I really hope you enjoy it. And keep in mind, the partial eclipse is still going on until 3 or 2. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us on WFAA Plus and here live on WFAA. We hope it was as incredible for you as it was for us. Our coverage continues at WFAA.com and tonight at 4, 5, 6, and 10.